Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto reincarnated in DXD world and got harem, part 1. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic Rito Kun Nata Chan, link is in the description, also subscribe if you enjoy the video, let's start the story. The devils are believed in many religions, myths, and cultures to be a supernatural entity that is the personification of evil and the enemy of God and humankind. The nature of the role varies greatly, ranging from being an effective opposite force to the creator god, locked in an eon's long struggle for human souls on what may seem even terms, to the point of dualistic dithism, to being a comical figure of fun or an abstract aspect of the individual human condition at least according to humans who believed in religions and gods. In essence the concoctions of the humans weren't far off the mark, especially the devils being personification of evil, and the enemy of God and humankind being an effective opposite force to the creator God, locked in an eon's long struggle for human souls on what may seem even terms, and some others. But over the years a lot had changed within the devil society, especially since the end of the great war fought between the three factions of angels, devils, and fallen angels mentioned in the Bible, another under the leaderships of the biblical god, the four great satans, and the fallen angel organization, Grigori, led by Azazel. The change was so great that a civil war had been ignited in the devil society, which was a clash between the old and new ideals. The devils with new ideals had won and had been able to force those with old ideals out of the underworld the home of devils and fallen angels. Serzich's Gremory, Ajuka Astareth, Serafal Sitri, and Falbium Glaciolabolas had gone on to be the new Satans and were termed as the Yondai Mam, four great Satans, for their great power, their new ideals, and their role in the civil war. After acquiring the title of the Satans they came to be known as Serzich's Lucifer, Ajuka Beelzebub, Serafal Leviathan, and Falbium Asmodeus. A new era of devils was born. One of the changes in the devil society was the introduction of evil pieces, also known as the devil's pieces, a set of 15 chess pieces given to top-class devils to increase their ranks by reincarnating other beings into devils. The evil pieces were created by Ajuka Beelzebub to help replenish the number of devils after the Great War, which had caused the death of countless devils. So, do devils really exist? Questioned Uzumaki Naruto. It wasn't much of a question seeing that he was currently in the presence of four devils. Currently the 17-year-old young blonde was a guest to the occult research club of Kum Academy, and sitting in one of the couches in the club's club room his eyes traveled between the four members of the club, though his eyes lingered more on the chests of the 2-O-N Sama of Kum Academy, rather than the black bat-like wings that had sprouted of their backs. Luckily for him the two didn't seem to be offended by it. It didn't mean that the chest of the 2-O-N Sama isn't the only thing that his eyes seemed to linger upon, his eyes also feasted upon their beauty, and for the first time did he understand that the rumors of the beauty were exaggerated. His eyes also lingered on the petite stoic school mascot, with the way she continued to chew down on her sweets unknowingly reminded him of a possessive cat guarding her territory and goods. As for the fourth member, apart from noticing the pair of black bat-like wings sprouting off his back, he cared not to bother about him. He was a teenage boy after all, and at such an age boys only cared about their future, and girls thought the former was something only a few cared about and was always the second priority. I am surprised that you are taking all this quite nicely, responded Rhea's Gremory, as her eyes lay on the blonde who seemed to be unfazed by the revelation of devils really existing. Thanks. It certainly was a surprise, but it's not like I am someone normal either, he replied. He wasn't. He had been aware of the supernatural magical world for years now, and in a way he too has been a part of this world, though most of the things he had learned over the years were self-taught. Korea's gremory had all started when her friend Sona Citri called her to pass on some important news, and what she heard from Sona came as a shock to her. It had been more than a year now since they had learned that one of the students in Kum possessed a sacred gear, and from what they had understood it was quite a powerful sacred gear. The moment they had learned of it, both she and Sona had put a claim on the sacred gear wielder joining their peerage. Luckily for her it had all come down to a game between her and Sona to decide who would approach the sacred gear wielder and have him join their peerage, and to her luck, she had succeeded in winning the game. The sacred gear wielder was hers. It was a true blessing to her, considering the event that was going to come in the future. With the sacred gear wielder in her peerage her chances of winning the event and acquiring her freedom would increase by quite a bit. But things didn't go as planned, as she dilly-dallied with her plans of approaching the sacred gear wielder and waited for a perfect opportunity for her to approach him. And unknowing of her year had already passed, but it was something that Sona seemed to have not missed. Not only did Sona miss a year pass by, but apparently her patience over the year had run thin too, and seeing that she hadn't yet made her move or even come in contact with the wielder, Sona made her move and even acquired the sacred gear wielder as a part of her peerage. It came as quite a shock to her when her childhood friend and rival passed on that news to her. 
per week she sulked at her loss and would have continued if Queen Himejima Keno hadn't put her down verbally at her own failure of a plan and had encouraged her to start anew. She along with her peerage and their familiars scouted the school and the town for people with strong magical potential and those that weren't aligned to anyone else to begin with and easily manipulated. To her further self-loathing she learned that Sona was already ahead in this department and she had already scouted those with potential and had them join her peerage. The only one with great magical potential she had yet to confront was Uzumaki Naruto, and with the way things were between the two, it was certain that she wasn't going to confront him anytime soon. And this was what brought her meeting with Uzumaki Naruto, the notorious prankster, super pervert, super athlete, and an overall enigma of Kum Academy. Not only will she possibly gain an addition to her peerage, but making Naruto join her peerage was bound to annoy Sona. And to her delight, from what she had learned so far from him speaking, not only did he seem to be in the know of the supernatural world, but also had some sort of interaction with the supernatural world. So, what do you devils want from me? He questioned the very question she was waiting for. I want you, Uzumaki Naruto, to join his peerage, she said. He blinked a couple of times and then took a glance at everyone present and then asked, aren't you supposed to be a devil to do so? A small smile tugged her lips as she tried to keep a neutral expression, having no negative response was just the start she wanted. Nothing, as such. All present here apart from me weren't born as devils, rather they were reincarnated as devils when they joined his peerage through the help of evil pieces, she answered, and while doing so summoned her remaining evil pieces and placed them in the desk between them. Evil pieces? He questioned as his eyes gained a look of interest looking at them. Her smile of victory really started to spill, as she spoke, evil pieces, also known as the devil's pieces, are a set of 15 chess pieces, given to top high-class devils to increase their ranks by reincarnating other beings into devils. The evil pieces were created by Ajuka Beelzebub, one of the four great satans, to help replenish the number of devils after the great war between devils led by satan, angels under the leadership of the biblical god, and fallen angels of Grigori, which had caused the death of countless devils. Oh. He must be one hell of a genius. Naruto commented with a look of awe. That Beelzebub Sama certainly is, she replied back she just knew she had won him without doing much. So, you are going to use one of these pieces to reincarnate me he said, as he pointed at the chess pieces placed on the desk in front of him, and then pointing at the three behind her he added, just like you reincarnated them. It was not a question, but a statement that she could tell, and so she simply nodded back. He seemed to contemplate things for a minute and then questioned, what's in there for me if I were to agree with your proposal and become a devil under your peerage? Yes, this was the very question she was waiting for. A lot to count, of which the primary I could say that, as a devil your body configuration will be far stronger, that of an average human, and your skills will vary on the type of evil piece used for reincarnation. You will also gain night vision, the ability to fly with the help of your wings, and a high recovery rate, she replied. Nice. He commented with an odd look. I have him. She couldn't help but cheer in her mind. But I am already stronger than your average human, am capable of clearly seeing in the dark and have above par healing abilities, he replied with a cheeky grin. You may be, but being reincarnated into a devil your abilities will gain a boost won't you like that? Spoke Akeno for the first time during the conversation. Enchanting he replied, and a small pause later with the cheeky grin he added, but I can always train for that. Which? How had she forgotten that one of the reasons that Sona had yet to approach Uzumaki Naruto was his tendency to annoy people. But she hadn't lost a battle yet, after scouting for a valuable peerage member, she had spent another week scouting information on the blonde. You will have a steady income and will be paid for various jobs that the higher-ups will have us do, she said. Uzumaki Naruto is an orphan and works part-time for his school and living expenses. I already earn a good amount for a living, and I enjoy where I work, and at times I do some other jobs if I ever need extra money," he replied with that cheeky grin still present on his lips. Well, think of it as an added income, she replied. Don't care, he replied, as he shrugged off her suggestion. Twitch. Twitch. You will also gain a land of your own in the Gremory territory and underworld, which by size will be almost thrice the area of Kum Academy, she added. Despite being an orphan, Uzumaki Naruto was quite well off in living standards, as the blonde was in a possession of a normal two-story terrace house with a light blue exterior, a balcony on the second floor, and a brown roof, something she learned he inherited from his parents, though something she learned had a quite shocked. And that was the fact that the blonde had on multiple occasions tried to paint the exterior of the house with bright orange color, and only the opposition of the neighbors had stopped. Actually he did succeed in doing so a couple of times, but the neighbors quickly acted and formed a united front and repainted the walls. Seriously, who in the world painted their house with bright orange color? Don't care. 
I am good with what I have, he replied, and the cheeky grin returning on his face he added. On the contrary, I can even spend his life in the wilderness with a tree, as his bed though don't hope for a welcome in the wilderness if you ever come to visit. Which. She could hear the stifled giggling of Akeno, but paid it little mind. Being a part of his peerage, not only will you get to meet the Satans, but will also be able to meet the various gods at some point in time, she further added. Don't care I was never religious to begin with, he replied much to her annoyance. That was expected, and at the same time unexpected, but she hadn't lost yet, as she had yet to put it on the board of discussion. You can also have your own harem if you make it to the rank of a high-class devil, and even gain a territory of your own if you make it to the rank of an ultimate-class devil, she added. She was going to appeal to his perverted side, and she was damn sure this was going to work. The blonde was called the super pervert for a reason. But to her surprise his only reaction was a raised eyebrow. And what makes you think that I am incapable of forming my own harem the way I am now, he replied not the one she had expected. R is quite an optimistic way of thinking of Uzumaki-kun, commented Akeno. I assure it's more than a way of thought, he replied, as he winked at Akeno. If that is so, then wouldn't being a devil be in your very profit said Akeno leaving her words hanging. How so? He questioned back with a look of slight interest. The devil lives a life of about hundreds and thousands of years, replied Akeno, and for the first time she saw a look of complete interest on the blonde's face. Which? How in the world did Akeno gain his interest so easily? What did she even mean by? I am in. What? What? Just like that. She couldn't help but question. She was trying so hard to get his interest throughout the conversation, but it failed, and Akeno had done so with a couple of sentences, and she did not just get his interest, but also got him to agree. How? Indeed. Who would want to miss a lifetime eternal opportunity like that? He answered. Huh. What? It then clicked to her. Twitch. 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 In the end, it was her trump card that became the deciding factor. But did he have to? As if sensing her inner turmoil, that damn cheeky grin returned to his face as he spoke with an innocent look. You aren't good at this, all the negotiation stuff, are you? Twitch. 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 Uzumaki Naruto didn't feel much difference in the constitution of his body after being reincarnated into a devil and a member of Rhea's Grimmery's peerage, apart from increase in his magic reserve. He was to begin with a human that surpassed the norms of a normal human, so he believed it to be the factor for him not noticing the changes that constituted after being reincarnated into a devil. After reincarnating him as a devil and a member of her peerage, Rias went on to explain to him some general information about devils, which consisted of the home of devils the underworld, the lifestyle of devils, the devil language, the natural enemies of devils, and she also spoke about the Grimmery clan of whom she apparently was the heiress, about the demon hierarchy. About the four great satans, and how she happened to be the younger sister of the current Lucifer. He knew she was holding back a lot, but it didn't matter to him, he was never the guy who thought things through walking into situations. But that didn't mean that he wouldn't have loved more information. Oh well, I'll just gleam out information in his way, he muttered to himself as he walked his way back to his home. It was already late in the night by the time he left the club room, and so the sky was brightened by the light of the full moon as he walked home. He had always found the night to be more relaxing and rejuvenating at the same time, but today he found it more relaxing and rejuvenating. It was as if energy was wildly coursing through him and asking him to parade in the brilliance of the night. Dud. So lost in the feeling that the night brought he had completely lost his track of the road and in doing so had crashed into someone. Seriously, what was with this town? Everywhere he looked he happened to find a cute beautiful sexy girl. Are you alright? He asked as he put forth his right hand to help her up. Since the moment his eyes had landed on her he had a bad feeling and that feeling intensified the moment he took his hand to stand up. I am. Thank you. She replied as she helped herself up and slightly brushed off the dust of her skirt. With each passing second the feeling of danger intensified, but he shrugged that feeling off, there was no way was he going to see such a beautifully cute girl, as a threat though why was a girl wearing a school uniform this late in the night was beyond him, and neither did it recognize the school uniform from any of the schools in the vicinity. But to face such a beautiful and cute girl something as unimportant as that didn't matter to him. So not that it is his business, but still what is a beautiful girl like you doing out so late in the night in your school uniform? He couldn't help but ask. A light shade of pink dusted her cheeks for a second or two, as she seemed to wonder whether she should answer him or not, but after a minute or so she did answer. I was waiting for a boy. I see he replied, there were many things he could ask her about, but he did not intend to pry in her business, so he did not say any further. 
but apparently seeing his raised eyebrow she decided to indulge his curiosity as she started speaking, well, he is a boy from Come Academy that I fell in love with and I decided to meet him today to ask him to go out with me, but apparently he has already got engaged with somebody else in this week or so. Oh well he certainly had no good reply for that. But she didn't seem to have finished speaking, as she added, and the funny thing is that it would have been the first time that I would have ever talked to him. Silly of me, isn't it? Nothing of the sort you fell in love with and you intended to pursue a romantic relationship with him. You would get to know each other as you carried on with your relationship. And I am certain that if he hadn't engaged in a relationship before meeting you or had someone he certainly would have loved to go out with a beautiful and cute girl like you, he replied. She really is beautiful. Certainly not on the level of Rhea's Gremory and Himajima Keno, but the girl in front of him held a certain charm about her. Thank you. She replied as once again a pink hue adorned her cheeks. Well, I hope to see you around, he said it was already late in the night, and even though he did not bother about the time he returned home seeing that no one was around, but certainly the girl probably had a family waiting for her, and neither did he wish to be nosy about her business. Same here she muttered and started walking in the opposite direction as hers. But suddenly she turned around and a cheerful voice spoke. By the way, his name is Ikma, Amano Ikma. Mine is Naruto Uzumaki Naruto, he replied with a small smile gracing his lips. Bye bye, Uzumaki kun, she said as she cheerfully waved and walked away. Bye bye, Amano san, he replied as he waved back and headed in the direction of his home. So, did you find anything about our target? Questioned Donaseek. Nothing, replied Rainer aka Ikma, as she and her team sat down to discuss their plan. Hey how come? The amount of lust the boy has was a guarantee that he would not only accept to be your boyfriend and would spill all his beans if you would even flash a small amount of skin off your udders, spoke up Middled. Simple, because we were late in approaching him. He apparently already joined the peerage of the devil named Sona Citri, replied Rainer she was not in the least offended at the last comments as she knew that the girl was jealous of perfect body and her lack of it. So what? We will just eradicate all the devils of the peerage he is in and then eradicate him too, commented Kalawiner. You can be his guest and try it. But let me warn you in advance, the girl Sona Citri is the younger sister of Leviathan, replied Rainer, which made Kalawiner gulp down her words. Well, I don't mind giving our target a visit, commented Donaseek. Be his guest, replied Rainer. What about you? Questioned Middled. Me, I have found myself an interesting target to play with, replied Rainer, making the others raise their eyebrows in curiosity, but she had no wish to satisfy their curiosity, not yet at least. You see, the four gathered around were no ordinary humans. On note, they weren't even humans. They are fallen angels angels that have fallen from the grace of God due to having impure thoughts that divert them from the teachings of the God in the Bible. Their job in a town which falls under the territory of devils was to monitor an individual with a potentially powerful sacred gear, and that individual happened to be Haim Misei. For the liking of Uzumaki Naruto, the next morning came too early. He hadn't even blinked a minute of sleep last night. A lot was going through his restless mind last night. On whim he had agreed to be turned into a devil and become a part of Rhea's Gremory's peerage. Turning into a devil had brought barely any difference to his looks, apart from a pair of bat-like wings sprouting off his back, which he could to appear and disappear at his own will, somehow his clothes didn't sport holes, despite him sprouting the wings of his back. There was also the fact that if he were to live a normal and safe life, then he was bound to go on to live for hundreds and thousands of years, but that didn't matter to him much, as there would be other supernatural beings that would live as long as him. And it wasn't like he was going to have a safe, normal life. He already lived a life of adventure and danger when he took on various errands that connected him to the supernatural world, and knowing that his king is the sister of the current Lucifer, he knew that it wasn't going to be a dull life. The thought of thinking things through before agreeing to being reincarnated as a devil did cross his mind last night, but it was a fleeting thought which he didn't ponder on much, as the deed was already done and there was no going back anymore. It was not like he had to answer to anyone. Currently attending classes his attention was not on the chapter the teacher was teaching, rather his mind seemed to have wandered off to the thoughts of Amano Ikma. She was beautiful, there was no denying it, and it wasn't odd for a teenager like him to be thinking and dreaming about her, but she wasn't the only beautiful girl he had interaction with yesterday. But there was something about Ikma that he couldn't place and that had him thinking of her. The tap on his shoulder gained his attention and turning around his eyes met the curious olive green eyes of Kiri Kaika. What's gotten into you? To completely ignore a lecture is unlike you, whispered Aika. But truly was unlike him. He certainly wasn't the most attentive guy in class, but he still was quite a better attentive student than the perverted trio. Just lost in thought about something that happened yesterday, he answered. 
Surprisingly or not, of all the people in Kum Academy he was the closest to Kirikaika, so much so that he could confide most of his secrets with her. It wouldn't be wrong to call her his closest friend. Oh. Would it be about your meeting with Grimory Senpai, Himijima Senpai, Kaneko-chan, and the other guy at the Occult Research Club's club room? Now that I think about it, you weren't home until late in the night, whispered Aika, as her eyes slowly started to sparkle in perverted glee. As she added, don't tell me, you already made your move on the revered beauties and mask it have come. No wonder you were late last night. How sly and fast of you, Naruto-kun. You really do live up to your reputation, Hiroshin sama Hiroshin, erotic god, it was a title the students gave him akin to the perverted trio. His was most illustrious than that of those three, as rumors of his experience in the worldly desire called lust, his ability to court any woman he needed, his prowess in bed, him dominating a succubus and making her his, him sending a mature and experienced housewife to world of lustful bliss. And many such had started spreading since entering second year of middle school, and they just kept on piling on. Some of the rumors had even his head spinning, and he was indifferent to most, and if he tried to deny them then that was like adding fuel to the fire. Nothing like that Ria's wanted me to join her club, he replied if it was any normal student calling another student of opposite gender with their name, especially an upperclassman, then there would be a number of rumors spreading around, but he was Uzumaki Naruto, and he had been always headless to formalities, as far as he knew, and so did the others. And did you? Questioned Aika with a raised eyebrow. I did. It sounded interesting, he replied, and watched with twitching eyes, as he saw her eyes sparkle behind her glasses, he was well aware of that look, and it never went well for him, and so he decided to bring the topic to the original question she asked, and about the thing you asked what seemed to distract me today. It's. Duck. The chalk collided with each of their foreheads. Uzumaki, Kirij, pay attention. Roared Nikade Muri, their homeroom history teacher with a twitching eyebrow. Yes. They replied in unison, and returned back to the lesson. A sigh of relief left his lips, the discussion was averted, at least for now. So, what am I supposed to do? Questioned Naruto, as he sat alongside fellow members of the club and peerage. After the lectures had ended for the day he had already decided to go visit Ria's at the clubhouse to gain some information, but he certainly hadn't expected for her to bring him to the club room. That someone turned out to be TMJM Kaneko. Words were being whispered among those who saw Naruto walk with their beloved school mascot, and some even openly stared at them, but neither of the two were bothered by it, so much so that Kaneko even continued to eat her imkin. Reaching the club room he was surprised to find it quite different from yesterday. There are weird signs and words in every area of the classroom, be it the floor, the walls or the ceiling. They all are covered with weird signs. And the one which stood out the most is the circle drawn at the center of the room, which took most of the space in the room. He knew at first glance that it was a magic circle. He could feel the demonic magic from it. Just like yesterday there were also a couple of sofas and desks in the room. He occupied the same sofa he occupied yesterday after he greeted the so-called Prince Charming of Kum Academy. Kaneko went on to join her older clubmate on the sofa he occupied and continued to chew down on her imkin. What surprised him most was the shower in the room and its view was blocked by a shower curtain. He was further surprised that someone was actually using it. From the shadow on the curtain he could easily tell that the one using the shower was a female, a very naked one at that. He didn't say much about this particular ability of his because he did not wish to add another accomplishment to his name of Iro Shin, but being under the care at a young age under him and being taught by him something like this was quite an easy task to accomplish. Looking at the shadow he had slowly whispered, 9958 to 90. That's Ria's. Apparently being a devil also gave one super hearing, as both Kiba Ikto and Kaneko turned to look at him with the former sporting a raised eyebrow, while the latter just looked at him with her patent blank look, but the words she had spoken conveyed her feelings. Becky. All he did at the blatant accusation was smile serenely at the petite beauty and responded in two simple words. Super Eki. And for the first time in his life he saw a reaction on that emotionless face, and that was the twitching of her eyebrows. If Riaz and Akeno had seen or heard anything, neither said nor did anything about it. Oh yeah, his heart had raced hundred miles a second after seeing Riaz walk out of the shower with her school uniform and with her wet hair which made her look more seductive than she normally was even without trying. It took quite a will on his side from stopping a blush spread on his cheeks, seeing Riaz in such a look whether he succeeded or not he did not know. Back to the present, his eyes curiously stared into hers as his mind wandered to the many things he would be doing as a devil. So what will I be doing? He questioned again will I be saving some damsel in distress? Or will I be guarding a princess? Or will it be a job to save a falling kingdom and its hidden princess? Or will I be fulfilling the lustful desires of a super hot maiden? 
or you lied to me yesterday, and I really have to sacrifice virgins, children, and puppies, though the super hot ones won't remain virgins, so there will be no sacrificing them. Or am I supposed to burn down the village and take super hot babes as my slaves? Or am I supposed to seduce a super hot babe from other factions into the devil folds, especially angels? Which? Why do all your thoughts revolve around women? Riaz couldn't help but question. I am a hot-blooded teen devil, and seeing that devils do evil, I decided to be the best amongst devils. To be the best I had to do the worst, and what better than committing one of the seven deadly sins. I thought about it a lot last night, and the result was lust winning by a landslide, but gluttony and sloth were the closest seconds, replied Naruto with an innocent looking face. Twitch. Twitch. Ufufufu that is quite an interesting way of approaching your devil life, commented Akeno with a small amount of sparkle in her eyes. Indeed it is answered by Naruto, and then focusing his complete attention on Akeno he asked you think so too, don't you? It certainly sounds interesting, replied Akeno, as she licked her lips, tracing her tongue around it, practically making an outline. They became very moist because of these actions. Eki senpai muttered an annoyed Kaneko, as she threw two crumpled empty cardboard boxes, which previously held pastries with enough force to knock them a bit. Ouch both muttered, as Naruto and Akeno rubbed the side of their head, where those crumpled boxes struck. Enough of this spoke Riaz with her voice raising a few octaves, and Naruto I already told you that we are the devils of new generation, and thoughts, so stop saying stupid things. And stop encouraging him, Akeno. But that's no fun. Both Akeno and Naruto whined at the same time. Twitch. 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 This is boring, muttered Naruto, as he made his way back to the club room after he finished handing out the contract flyers. His first and foremost job happened to be handing out contract flyers to make contracts with humans with great desire and greed, and thus gaining points, desire, to help increase one's standing in the devil world. For the past week, he went around on his bicycle, posting a leaflet which can summon Rhea's Gremory's group inside the mailboxes by using a mysterious device, a secret machine developed by the technology of the devils. It has the shape of those current portable game devices. There's a screen, and it has buttons. It's a touch pen type device. So it comes with a touch pen. And he was using the device the way he was told to. The monitor displays the map of the town he lives in Rhea's territory. He learned that each devil is given a certain territory in the human world, and they can only do their job within their territory, the job being that they get summoned by a human, then make a contract with a human, and then grant their wish. As a prize, they receive an award fitting for the particular wish humans make. It can be money, an object, and at times even their life. As a devil he too had to go do these jobs from now on. There are some contracts which go against the morals of the current devils, and some whose price doesn't match to the wish, then they get cancelled. According to Rias, people's values aren't equal. It's harsh, but the truth. The light flashing on the monitor of those devices shows the houses where people with a lot of greed live. So he specifically went to these areas to hand out the leaflet which comes with a magic circle. As long as there were lights flashing on the monitor, his work wasn't finished. Apparently after he turned into a devil other people, and even the police didn't seem to pay attention to him, and according to Rias, since he is already active, as a devil, humans don't realize his presence when he is working. He had been pedaling his bicycle every day, but the light displayed on the monitor seemed to never disappear. That's how much humans are with strong greed. Once you make a wish, it apparently becomes an addiction to keep on wishing for other ones. Making a contract is basically limited to occurring at night. That's because devils are only allowed to work at night. The daytime is a time for the angels and gods. Apparently the leaflets can only be used once, so once they use it, then he will have to hand it out again. In other words, his work will last forever. Well, thanks to his work, Rias and the others can continue to be active, and we never run out of jobs. So we are certainly increasing our point as being a devil. Apparently we get acknowledged by the Satans if we keep on making contracts and granting the wish of a human. To begin with, his job of handing out the leaflets was originally a job assigned to Rias' family. Rias changes the forms of the mouse and the bat that she owns into a form of a human and makes them hand out the leaflets like he did, and they do this both day and night. The reason why he was assigned to do it was because Rias wanted him to know what kind of job devils have to do from the beginning. It was something Kiba and the others did as well. Kiba Ikto, TMJM Kaneko-chan, Himijima Keno are all servant devils of Rias. So in a sense they are his seniors. So they all have experience in doing the work he was doing. So each person has a history of doing it ah, they aren't people, but devils. He may not like the work, but at least it gained approval of the fellow club peerage members. Ah. Uzumaki-kun. A feminine voice called out to him, and turning around he found himself staring at a face he had met a week ago. Yo, Ikma. 
he called back and was rewarded with a small blush on her cheeks. Calling one another by their given name, especially those of opposite gender, indicated extreme familiarity and intimacy in case of opposite gender, if they were not related at least in Japan. It was one of the reasons that he cared not for formality, especially when it came to females, as he simply loved seeing their reactions. The reaction on the face of Amano Ikma is just like he predicted, and he couldn't help, but inwardly smiled about it, but yet he couldn't help, but felt there was something wrong about the blush on her face. He also felt that danger feeling returned back tenfold, but he simply shrugged those feelings off again. Looking at her he found her dressed in the attire consisting of a short black dress with a small, light purple jacket on top, made her beauty and cuteness heightened to a new level. It's nice to meet you, Uzumaki-kun, she said. Same here he replied, and then looking around he remembered it to be the same place he had last met her, and so he couldn't help but add I hope you aren't waiting for the boy again. No nothing of that sort I am heading to a nearby restaurant to get something for dinner, since my parents aren't home tonight she replied, as she fidgeted, and then her violet eyes stared into his blue ones, as she suddenly spoke out loud would like to join at the restaurant. The words left his lips, as he looked with confused eyes at her. She quickly averted her eyes, and her fidgeting increased, as she stuttered out, would you like to join me at the restaurant? Her eyes met with his for a brief second, as she further added, I don't like eating alone. Sure, he replied he was accustomed to eating out with friends, some of which were girls, especially Aika, and so he didn't see any problem, though the smile that lit up her face at his approval made him blush a bit. I am back. Announced Naruto as he entered the orc club room. Welcome back though you are later than I expected, said Riaz as she looked up from the work she was doing. Naruto's breath hitched for a few seconds and heart skipped a few beats as he took a real look at her face, she is currently wearing and had quite a deep and thoughtful look on her face. I met a friend on my way back to the club room and decided to join her to have dinner at a restaurant, said Naruto, as he remembered the fun dinner he had with Ikma O. By the way, I finished giving out all the contract flyers and you really look beautiful. For a moment Riaz forgot all she was doing and stared with wide eyes at the blonde, his word sounded nothing like his mischievous easygoing and sometimes flirtatious tone, rather it sounded quite sincere. I took a few seconds for her to compose herself and then she spoke, I see. Good job a pink hue adorned her cheeks, as she recalled his sincere words he spoke just seconds ago, and so she added, and thank you. For the next minute no word was spoken between the two, because of the awkwardness caused, a pleasant one at that, though they continued to stare at the other. For some unknown reason Riaz couldn't focus on the work in front of her, and so she decided to focus on the boy in front of him her cute little servant. I have wanted to ask you this for a couple of days, especially seeing that it's almost been about a week. How has the life of a devil been? Questioned Riaz. So far nothing seems to have changed with my life, apart from the fact that I had to quit my part-time job, but I am at least doing something similar, as a job, as a devil. In the first place I never needed a part-time job to begin with seeing that. Naruto's words got caught in his throat as he gulped while blood gathered up north and down south, making him quite uncomfortable, a pleasant sort though, as his eyes looked at Riaz who had walked out of the desk and was making her way towards him so far, he had only seen Riaz in her school uniform and a couple of times in a tracksuit seeing that so far all their interactions was during school time and in school ground, she apparently had a number of school uniforms in her closet, at least according to her, so it was quite surprising to see dressed in an attire quite different from those two. Currently Riaz was dressed in a light purple nightgown, making him once again appreciate the beauty she is no matter the clothes she wore, but that was not what had him uncomfortable as the attire she had currently donned on, Riaz had currently a light violet color nightgown donned on, which wasn't that odd seeing it was already late in the night. But the thing was that the nightgown she had donned on was completely see-through. Riaz is a young woman in her late teens with a buxom figure, a light skin tone, and blue-green eyes that much Naruto knew for a long time, since his eyes had set upon the Redeed years ago. He also knew that she didn't have the fat of dieting to maintain a skinny figure that seemed to be infected to almost all teenage girls and young women and even some adult women, something he had confirmed in the week he had been a part of her group. He had always known she was and is one of the most beautiful girls women his eyes had ever seen, but looking at her now he got to appreciate her beauty further. The nightgown that Riaz is wearing hid nothing beneath it and thus her body was as good as naked to the stark and wide eyes of Naruto and the only thing that kept from admiring her body by the whole is the yellow pink panties. He wanted to avert his eyes from her for her own good but he couldn't as his eyes continued to take in her beautiful form her supple thighs, her shapely waist, her toned stomach and her curvaceous frame. She has a lot more skin on her body than most teenage girls he knew but the skin was in the right proportion and in the right area, not too little and not too much. 
but what enticed Naruto the most are the protrusions on her chest which were the envy of most girls women, and the lust and wet dreams of most men, and few girls women, there were a few guys who batted for the same team after all. He knew they were big, but seeing them without any constraint actually made him appreciate their size and look. They didn't even need a bra to keep them uplifted, nor did they have a tiniest of sag despite their enormity. They looked perky and soft. They bounced and jiggled with even the slightest movement by her side. He couldn't help but wish to squeeze them, fondle them, and bury himself in them. And then there adorning the peak of those alluring bosoms were her pink areola, and at the center of the areola was a small slightly dark pink, then the shade of areola that stood like the peak above the peak, their proportions neither too small nor too big, and graced her bosoms like a crown. The sight of those areolas and slightly erect was so much enticing that it took all of his willpower to hold himself down instead of jumping her and playing with them, twiddling them, to kiss them, and to finally take them in between his lips and then in his mouth and suck on them. If someone called Naruto's mind a dirty mind for the thoughts he was currently having, then he was seriously going to question their preferences. He had always been a pervert, at least since he actually started to see females as truly the opposite sex, and having that man as shus role model didn't help much in that matter, rather it helped elevate his perversion. He had seen quite a few girls and women in their birthday suits in his short life, and each a beauty in her own right, but never had one brought such a desire in him. But the way that Naruto looked at Ria's, it would be stupid to say that she failed to notice his glance. It wasn't new to her to have her body stared at for she knew she had a body that enticed almost all men, and a few women too, and seeing that she had almost bared her entity in front of Naruto, she had donned on a nightgown, but it was completely see-through. And the only other fabric she had on is a yellow pink panties, so she knew he would stare, and she expected and wanted him to do so. After a week of thinking it through she had decided to go on with her plan of seduction of Naruto. It all started with her deadline to the date of her marriage contract with Riser Phoenix, set up by their parents coming closer, and it didn't help that he was trying to push forward the date of their engagement. She hated that man. She hated his view of her. She hated the fact that he craved her body. She hated that he viewed her as his personal trophy. To put it simply she wanted out of the marriage contract. But getting out of the contract seemed almost impossible, especially when neither her parents nor her brother agreed to her demands, but over time she had come up with two solutions that could help her out of the marriage. Her first option was the most reasonable, and logically, but with passing days it started to feel more and more out of her grasp, and it was this that had made her choose the second and most illogical plan of all. It all started with learning about Haim Mise and the powerful sacred gear he seemed to wield, and with time and research that the sacred gear that Haim Mise wielded was confirmed to be one of the 13 Longinus. It was then Riaz had decided to act on her second option, and that was to seduce Haim Mise and have him take her virginity after making him her servant. The boy was a well-known pervert that lusted after any and all women girls, and his lust increased tenfold if it was a girl woman who had a pair of big breasts on them. In a sense he was and would be no different than Riser, lusting after her body, but at least this she would be doing on her own accord. Not only that, but seeing how he was weak in front of the opposite gender and having him as a member of her peerage would have helped her have a reign over him. Having him take her virginity would nullify her contract with Riser. And, as for her family, she would then make a story of their love for each other and make them somehow believe it. They might have hated her for some time, but for a better future, she was willing to take their hate for some time they would eventually get over it. She didn't know how things would go between Haim Mise and her from then on, will they fall in love or not, but if her family put them down and had her settle with him, then she would do so, for at least it would be she herself who had created the situation. But the plan of Ria's went down the drain when Sona had enough of her not taking action over a year when she had not only claimed Haim Mise as her future peerage member, but had won a fair and square game on that matter, and so Sona had approached Haim Mise and had him reincarnated as a member of her peerage. It was for this reason Ria's had to settle for Naruto as her peerage member. But with such time limiting her with coming up with another plan she had to continue with her second plan, and for that she had to choose between her two male peerage members. But Ikto was a no-go from the beginning, not only could she see him in that light, and rather she thought of him as a younger brother, also neither could her family ever be fooled about a relationship with Kiba, as they knew him very well, and then there was his nature and preferences to think of too. That left her with only Uzumaki Naruto, her newest peerage member. He is no Kiba in looks, but he is still good looking on the eyes and rather had a more roguish handsome look. She could feel that he is strong despite not testing his strength, and it had nothing to do with the number of evil pieces needed for his reincarnation as a devil. He too was renowned as a pervert in the academy rather was considered a bigger pervert than the perverted trio, and there were quite a number of other rumors about him to boot, not that she was unconvinced of her capability of seducing any man she had set her eyes upon, despite not doing no such thing ever. 
But the difference between Naruto and Issei was the sacred gear they wielded. She didn't know whether Naruto wielded one or not. Both Issei and Naruto would be considered lowest amongst the ranking of devils with them reincarnated from humans. But what set Issei apart from Naruto was the sacred gear he wielded, or the Longinus to be precise. It wouldn't matter if Issei was a reincarnated devil, for no matter the faction a Longinus wielder would be considered amongst the top tier for simply wielding power capable of killing gods. And so it was a tough decision for Rias to make, but thinking it over for a week, she had decided to go with it. Naruto certainly couldn't be manipulated like Issei, but the blonde seems to have a kind, fun-loving side to him. It was for this reason that she had others leave the room early today and was dressed in the way she is. But nervousness kicked in her when he had finally arrived, and she had second thoughts about it. But then he had called her beautiful out of the blue, and the sincerity in his voice had made her nervousness wash away as her body moved on its own accord. Now having Naruto stare at her, Rias could clearly see the lust and desire in his stark eyes, but she could also see and feel more than just lust and desire, her eyes saw and body felt admiration and appreciation. For some reason her heart fluttered and she actually liked his look. Oh, she especially liked what happened down south. All this happened in a matter of seconds. Holding his bleeding nose with his right hand and having his left hand covering his reaction that was visible through his pants down south as he somewhat compassed himself and continued speaking and my parents have left enough behind that I can live a good life even when I turn 30. I saw muttered Rias as she silently took the seat in front of Naruto. Neither spoke for the next few minutes as an awkward and uncomfortable silence descended amidst them, but despite that neither of their eyes left the other and so their faces had turned almost a violent shade of red akin to the hair of Rias. The silence was finally broken as Naruto spoke up, well, see you tomorrow. And he quickly walked to the teleportation circle and used it back to his home. Arriving home in a flash of light Naruto could only think of one thing and so he rushed around the room gathering necessities for a long, restless, sleepless night full of imagination. So, how did it go last night? Questioned Akeno, as currently she is the only one apart from Rias to be at the club room. Rias stayed by the special room adjoining the occult research club or club room in the old school building, so in a sense Rias never left the club room to begin with. So it wouldn't be wrong to say that Akeno is the first person to arrive at Orc. It seems that it will work, commented Rias. That's good, replied Akeno of all the peerage members of Rias that was not Naruto only Akeno knew of her plans about Naruto. It was essentially a plan completely sketched by Akeno knowing the nature and habits of Rias and the reputation of Naruto, though she had to first filter what was just a rumor and what was the truth of all the rumors that had spread around over the years. It was a tough task to learn the truth about Naruto or at least what she discerned as the truth, but she wouldn't be Akeno Oen Sama, one of the two great ladies of Kum Academy. And so being the great Akeno Oen Sama she did not miss the slight change in the expression of Rias when she answered and her curious switch was flipped on. Now, coming clean with the details, Rhea spoke to Akeno as she came face to face with her king with a gleam in her eyes. I would like information if I have to get Naruto-kun to do my bidding. Eh? Details. There isn't much to de discuss. Stuttered out Rhea's too quickly for even her own liking. Ara, are you saying that there isn't much to discuss? Sounds suspicious. Now I really want to know what transpired last night, especially knowing the reputation of Naruto Kun Ufufufu commented Akeno as she involuntarily started licking her lips. Thud. The door slammed open much to both relief and annoyance of Rias, relieved for she would probably be saved from Akeno by the person that had arrived and annoyed at the fact that person had decided to slam open the door instead of knocking on the door. The Orc Club Room is situated in the old school building which had a number of spells placed on it, and, as such no normal student was able to enter the old school building, and if they tried to then they would remember some important task they had to do and would move to do it immediately. Sona. Spoke not so surprised Rias, but she certainly was surprised by the look on the face of her childhood friend and rival. Where is he? A very annoyed and a very enraged Sona questioned, or rather demanded. It didn't need to be told to either Rias or Akeno, as of whom Sona demanded, there was only one person in this world that could get Sona so annoyed and angered and lose her composure, and that person had recently joined their group. Well, he hasn't arrived yet, Rias answered, and wasn't surprised to find the annoyance on the face of Sona rising some more. But there was something she couldn't keep quiet about, and so she asked, by the way Sona, why have you dawned on an illusion? It's nothing. Do don't fret about it. Just tell me where highs. Or when will he appear? spoke Sona, and for a second at the beginning her voice wavered, and it was enough for Rias and Akeno that something was off. Well, he should be. Rias' words stopped in her mouth as Akeno sneaked behind Sona without her knowledge and with a sly smile on her face as she spoke, if it is nothing then you wouldn't mind us seeing Sona Kachin without the illusion, now would you Kachin? 
and before Sona could react Akeno placed a single finger on her shoulder and passed a pulse of her magic on Sona and in doing so destroyed the illusion Sona had donned on. But their eyes saw made their eyes widen and they had to hold back their laughter. Sona was still dressed in the Come Academy girl's uniform, consisting of a white long-sleeved button-down shirt with a black ribbon on the collar, a black shoulder cape and matching button-down corset, and a magenta skirt with white accents, and also her patented red glasses, but there was glaring difference in her outfit, that being the color of it, and a few changes here and there. The color of her shirt had changed from white to radiant gold color and had turned sleeveless. The same went for the black shoulder cape and black corset, with their color changing from black to pink, while the black ribbon on the collar had turned a darker shade of pink, and the magenta skirt turned radiant golden with silver linings. The sleeves that had been missing from her shirt seemed to be turned black fingerless gloves that reached up to her elbows. But the biggest thing hidden by the illusion happened to be an almost two feet long pink magical girl wand with a heart design and small bat-like wings at one end. Don't you dare laugh. An irritated voice of Sona commanded as her eyes turned to look at Akeno and Rias who were trying hard and failing to hide their giggling lips with the palms of their hands. It took quite a strong willpower from Rias to outright not laugh at her friend's predicament and to stop giggling, and then she spoke, by the way, what makes you think it was her words stopped rolling on her lips, seeing the flat look that Sona was giving her even Akeno had the same look donned on as she stared at her, so she quickly changed her question how did this come to be? Which? The vein popped on the forehead of Sona as she started recalling the event that happened moments ago in the student council room. I hope you all have your duties memorized, for I want you to perform them with perfection, spoke Sona to the members of the student council. All present here were not just members of the student council, but are also the members of the peerage of Sona Citri. Seeing the raised hand of Haim Misay she simply sighed, and even before the latest inductee of her peerage, and before he could put forth his question she replied, No Haim, I am not changing your job. You are going to the photography club at their request. She wasn't going to give him his request of having him help the kendo club, the swimming club, the tennis club or any other such club that was basically dominated by girls or were simply all girls clubs, simply so he could stare at the girls and forget his job. Seeing his hands raise again she replied again before he could ask, no again. I am not changing your partner in your job. You will be working with Saji. He looked completely dejected, but that look lasted only for a few seconds, as her bishop Hanakai Momo decided to cheer and comfort the brunette at the same time, and while she did so Haim was quickly captured by her impressive bust, and he was back to his lively self. Shaking her head at the perverted servant she had gotten herself, she decided to address the main matter of today's meeting. Now, about the training schedule I have planned not only a schedule that not only will help you advance in skills, but will be working well with what you are truly capable of. For that you will be divided into teams. With her eyes focused on Maguri Tamo and Kusaka Ria she continued, Tamo you will be teaming up with Ria, your focus will be forming coordination between your short and mid-long range offense. Tamo seemed ready for action, while Ria nodded her head. Her eyes then focused on Saji Jensherm and Namura Aruko she added, while well, Saji and Raruko will be teaming up together and working on support and offense. Saji looked disappointed, while well, Raruko looked quite ecstatic. Her eyes then shifted its focus to Haim Misei, Yuri Tsubasa, and Hanakai Momo, as she spoke, Haim, you will be teaming up with Tsubasa and Momo, and the two of your training will be focused on offense and defense. Haim had a perverted face, while Momo had a smile on her face. I and Tsubaki will be overlooking the training she added to which both Saji and Haim seemed overjoyed, both for different reasons of course, she simply shrugged and continued, and our main focus of the training this weekend will be to lean and explore the capabilities of the sacred gears wielded by Saji and Haim the absorption line and the. Her words died down in her mouth as suddenly the student council's room started to fill with thick white smog. What is this? A frightened Saji and Haim stuttered. Unlike those two, Tsubaki, Momo, and Ria were quick to form barriers, while Tamo, Tsubasa, and Raruko took refuge behind the barriers Tamo, and Raruko had to literally drag the stunned and frightened Saji and Haim inside the barrier. To the horror of Sona, the barriers seemed completely ineffective against the smog as it penetrated their barriers. Saji and Haim literally screamed like girls, while the real girls tried to figure out the situation. But before anyone could do anything, the color of the smog turned from white to pink and then to white, and then it simply disappeared. All that happened in a matter of a couple of seconds, and Sona was the first to notice the change. And knowing that the culprit behind all this is bound to be Uzumaki I came here searching for him, said Sona with an annoyed look on her face. I see. Stated Ria's the only thing she learned was that the white smog that seemed to have worked its way into the student council room was the reason why Sona looked the way she did and possibly had done something hilarious to the other members of student council. 
but it certainly did not give any reason to doubt Naruto for that thought it was a given that it was Naruto's doing for no one was as brave as Uzumaki Naruto to prank the student council, especially the student council president Sona Sitri. Ara, but Naruto-kun isn't here yet. Commented Akeno. It was quite a sight for Rias and Akeno to see a fuming Sona. Why don't you just simply use magic and get rid of your current school uniform and change into a normal school uniform, either by the mundane or magic way, said Ria's the irony in her words, was not lost to Sona, nor did Akeno miss it, Ria's and Sona are not only childhood friends, but are rivals too. Which? Don't you think I tried? I did, and it didn't work, replied Sona with an annoyed tone. Ara, that must be some interesting work, commented Akeno. It is begrudgingly stated by Sona. Well, why don't you try using magic on her? The ambient magic here might help you, said Rias. It was the truth. The old school building of Kum Academy held powerful ambient magic in all of Kum City. It was for this reason Kum Academy was chosen as the headquarter of the Devils, and the old school building was the headquarter of Grimmery Territory, and with all the magic placed on the old school building the place had become a hot spot for magical power. Very well replied Sona, and she used her magic to whisk away her current clothes and create a new set of identical clothing as her school uniform. It worked. A surprised Sona squealed in delight. Well, that was too easy commented Akeno as a minute passed by and nothing seemed to happen. It was as if Akeno's words jinxed it as the white smog that Sona spoke of erupted of her clothes and within a second engulfed the entity of the room and a second later the smog changed color, but instead of the pink that Sona had mentioned it changed into a rainbow-colored smog. It stayed for a second or two in that state and then turned white again and simply vanished into nothingness. Click. 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 The clicking of the button of a camera assaulted the ears followed successively by a flash. Click. Click. Turning around the three girls found the blonde in question stood by the door with a camera in hand and with a goofy perverted smile on his face, clicked photos of them. I knew it this was going to be a blast, commented Naruto. Click. Click. Sailor Moon FTW. He loudly proclaimed. Click. Hey. What did he mean by that? The three young women couldn't help but wonder. Sailor Moon is a name that all the three were quite accustomed with, Riaz happens to be quite a fan of the series and had made both Akeno and Sona watch it multiple times over the years. Slowly and steadily their eyes shifted to each other and it was then they learned why Naruto seemed so excited. Riaz currently was dressed in a whose dominant color is orange, while the accent colors are yellow and navy blue. Her choker, collar, the center of her front bow, the elbow fittings on her gloves, skirt, shoes, and earrings were orange, while the gem on her tiara and her back bow were yellow, and her front bow was navy blue. She had one strip on her collar, her shoes were orange heels with ankle straps, and her tiara was colored gold. It was the Sailor Venus outfit from Sailor Moon with only a red hair bow missing. The Keno's outfit too has changed to that of Sailor Moon Sailor Senshi, and hers had changed into the outfit of Sailor Jupiter, she too is wearing two main colors, green and pink. Her scarf, boots, skirt, choker, gem of her tiara, button of the front bow, end of sleeves on gloves were all colored green, while both her bows and earrings were colored pink, the rest of her outfit is colored white, and her tiara is colored gold. The only difference is the light blue hair accessory that Sailor Jupiter is known to wear, as it is replaced by her patented orange ribbon. Sona had her outfit changed to that of Sailor Mercury her, consisted of a white sleeveless leotard, a blue skirt, light blue chest, and back bows, a blue brooch in the middle of her chest bow, blue boots, small blue stud earrings, three on each ear, a golden tiara with a blue gem in the middle, a blue choker, and white gloves with blue borders. Her collar is blue, and it has three stripes. The Sailor Senshi outfit suited the girls quite well and made their impressive figures stand out quite nicely, especially that of Rias and Akeno whose busts were barely being contained in the leotards they wore. How in the world did he do this? Their minds racked up with that question. That's one hell of an addition to my Sailor Moon collection, commented Naruto, and before either of the girls could do or say anything he simply vanished into thin air. For a couple of minutes there was utter silence in the orc clue room and it was only broken by Akeno as she spoke appreciating her outfit. This is quite intriguing and nice. It suits me quite well, and so does Butchm and Kachm. It does, doesn't it? Squealed and excited Rias for a long time she had intended to do this, but never got a chance to do so because of time limitations and the fact that Sona and Akeno come down on her if she ever decided to go down the route of cosplay, especially Sona who had quite a nightmarish events as such happening to her back in childhood days. Who would have thought that she would finally get to cosplay as Sailor Venus and all because of a prank by her new cute little servant. There was no way Sona would berate her for this. As for Sona, she had started trembling in anger and annoyance and looking at her both Rias and Akeno knew what was coming. Uzumaki Naruto. 
I am going to kill you. That was fun. Commented Naruto, as he made his way back home. The day had been the greatest day of his life for not only did he got some awesome pictures of Sona, Rias, and Akeno in. The Sailor Senshi cosplay, but also somehow had helped create a new legend in town, or rather he reincarnated the legend of Sailor Senshi in real life. For some reason Sona seemed quite angered and embarrassed wearing the Sailor Senshi outfit, and in her anger and embarrassment, she seemed to have forgotten that this was the human world, and humans weren't accustomed to see someone actually control and manipulate large quantity of water and use it to fire blasts, globs, and arrows made of water. Rias seemed too happy to help Sona in her endeavor of hunting him down and punishing him, and thus was firing beams of demonic energy at him. She looked happy to be mad at him, rather it was as if she was enjoying it. And then there was Akeno, the girl seemed to take some sort of twisted pleasure out of hunting him down and trying to electrolyze him by sending blasts of lightning one after another. Imajima Akeno is a sadist. That was the very truth he learned today, and it sent a chill down his spine. It was this action of those three that had brought forth a rumor that Sailor Senshi were not just a fiction but a reality, and within hours it spread around like wildfire and was already being considered as one of the legends of Kum. The only reason most didn't want to believe it and considered it as fake rumor or myth was the fact that no student, teacher, and those in and around Come Academy did not get a single piece of evidence to support their claim he had seen to it that no cell phones, cameras, and any such device would work or only he was allowed to capture shots of their beauty and Sailor Senshi outfit. And Sona seemed to have conjured a magical mist that seemed to blind people to the fact that it was she, Rias, and Akeno that were in the cosplay outfit of Sailor Senshi. It just added more mystique to the whole thing. Bukuku Sona just handed me a ticket for more pranks, and I am going to enjoy it to the fullest, he muttered, as evil laughter started to erupt from his lips. Ara, you are laughing really hard, on Plus Chan. What's so funny on Plus Chan? Share it with Middle 2. Middle 2 wants to laugh. The young girl's voice reached his ears, surprising him, he hadn't expected nor sensed anyone to be close by, but yet turning around, he found a young girl with blonde hair styled in twin short side ponytails and blue eyes sitting atop a branch of a tree by the roadside. She was dressed in gothic lolita attire, which consisted of a black lolita dress with white frills, a large black bow on the front, and a green jewel embedded on the collar, white thigh-high socks, and black shoes. She also wore a large black bow on top of her hair. Non plus Chan, are you Uzumaki Naruto by any chance? Question middled. This girl was bad news, he could feel it, and the fact that she had eluded his senses made her more threatening. He was never a good sensor to begin with, but even they were good enough to detect a normal human sneak upon him, and so for her sneak upon him meant that she was neither normal and possibly not a human either. The latter feeling was quite prominent, especially the danger he could feel of the girl. I am he answered. He is Uzumaki Naruto, and Uzumaki Naruto never runs away from danger, especially not when danger approaches him in the form of a cute loli dressed in a gothic lolita outfit. And who might middle be? He couldn't help but ask. Middle tis middle does she replied, and even though she didn't show it, he could feel the annoyance in her voice. Then she did something that cemented his view that she was neither normal nor human, as she ecstatically jumped off the tree branch, and in mid-jump a pair of black angel-like wings sprouted on her back. The danger senses of his tingled with more ferocity, and he recognized Middle as the ones that were cast out of heaven by the biblical god, and ones that Rias described as the natural enemy of devils, a fallen angel. Black panty such an adult taste, he muttered while shrugging off the danger feeling. He had learned long enough to never judge a book by its cover, so it certainly didn't matter that the girl is of a species that was a natural enemy to the devils like him. So, you really are Naruto on Plus Chan that seems to have caught Rainer on Sama's attention, she said with a big grin stretching her lips. Hey. Who the hell is Rainer? He couldn't help but think, but who cared about stupid things like that, as the camera he always carried with him made his way to his hand and in front of his eyes. Say cheese, middle Chan. He said. All the dumbfounded girl did was pose, the kind when a princess did when introducing herself. Click. Click. He got a couple of shots before he caught the sight of her wings completely unfurling and light formed in her hand of a pink spear-like object. How dare you treat me like a child? Shouted Middled as she flung the light spear at Naruto. The light spear shot at him faster than he had anticipated and thus was not fast enough to dodge it and the light spear went on to graze his upper left arm, he had a camera to save first of all. The pained scream left his lips as the light spear hurt more than he thought it would. His right hand went to cover up the wound that was not only bleeding, but for some unknown reason burning too. What the hell, it's just a cut, he muttered he had been through far greater pain and injuries and all that never had him slowed down, and yet a single cut seemed painful enough to actually force him to stay conscious. 
Oh my, looks like on plus Chan doesn't know that light is extremely harmful and poisonous to devils, and to a low class recently reincarnated devils like you, it turns out to be deadly. The fact that you are conscious and still alive shows you are more powerful for a recently reincarnated and low class devil. It must be the reason why Rainer on Sama is so interested in you, replied Middled, and then a cruel smile graced her lips as another light spear formed in her hands. But this is it for you. Die. The light spear was once again shot at him, but this time he was ready, and he easily dodged the spear, and while on it, he concentrated his energy into the sole of his feet and transversed the few meters distance between him and Middled in a blink of an eye. The shunned jutsu is one of the fastest techniques in his arsenal, and a technique that he most relied on, as it not only gave him speed, but an element of surprise too. What a surprised middle squealed as he found him in his guard and about to punch her in her guts. The punch did connect, but it wasn't as strong as his usual punches. I cannot focus my energy like I usually can he thought middle seemed right about the light element, acting as poison to devils, his senses were dulling with each passing second, and so were his skills. A small amount of blood blotted out of Middle's mouth as she staggered a few steps back by the force of the punch, but she wasn't a fallen angel just in name, and so she was quick to counterattack. From this close she couldn't hit him with a light spear this close, and so she went on to use her wings to hit him. Seeing her right wing descending to slap him away he moved to dodge, but wasn't fast enough to dodge completely, as the feathers of her right wing grazed his nose, his senses truly seemed to be dulling down. It had been about a week since he had been reincarnated devil, and apart from using the teleportation circle that barely used any demonic magic and thus the pent-up energy gathered in his nose. It distracted him so much that he failed to notice a light spear edging his way as she found distance between them and this time the spear lodged into his left shoulder. Jew. A pained scream left his lips and a sneeze left his nose at the same time. All the pent-up demonic magic released with his sneeze summoned up a powerful gust of wind that blasted off Middle's clothes but screamed middled as she tried to cover up her bare body. A naked lowly and a natural blonde at that, he muttered, as a goofy grin stretched his lips as he got a full frontal view of middled from her milky white skin, her small and handful bosoms, her pink areola and perked up, her flat stomach and her forbidden zone with a patch of blonde hair and skinny legs. Oh my, attacking my cute little servant that is quite bold of you full in angel san, he heard the voice of Rhea's which at first seemed determined and angered, and by the end seemed a bit unsure and surprised it was bound to be seen that she certainly wasn't going to expect a naked lowly fallen angel crouching down and covering herself to save her modesty. He could also sense his fellow partners and the other members of her peerage behind him. Knowing that he was completely safe now, he let his consciousness drift to the land of dreams. Bright blue eyes slowly drifted open as the early morning rays of sun converged on his face through his window. It's been a while since I had such a calm and fulfilling sleep, he muttered as he slowly rubbed off the remaining sleep of his eyes using his left hand and any dust that had settled by the corner of his eyes. It was very rare for Naruto to have a night's sleep without his dreams turning into a nightmare riddled with memories of the past, and it was for this reason he was not much of a morning person. But today had been a complete changeover from his normal morning self, rather today he felt quite energetic and lively. Even his dream last night was riddled with naked girls and ramen, or more specifically it constituted of a naked Rias Gremory, Himijima Ikeno, Sona Sitri, Kirikaika, Amano Ikma, TMJM Kaneko, and some of his female acquaintances served in a large bowl of steaming ramen for him to enjoy, and he enjoyed them to his heart's content that he did. So it was no wonder for him to feel a certain anatomy of his body standing tall in its full glory. It was then he felt something odd, and that being that there seemed to be nothing restraining his life-giving bank, and that was kind of odd seeing that he normally slept with his trunks on. Suddenly the events of last night flashed into his mind, and his eyes jerked towards his left shoulder and arm and found it to be completely healed, which wasn't new to him, as he had already been a fast healer, and injuries like last night normally healed with a night's sleep, though it was certainly odd to see a wound like that on his shoulder to heal completely in a fortnight. Now that he fully awakened, he felt someone clinging on him on his right side with it someone's right hand flung across his chest and one leg flung on his right leg. He could feel soft and smooth skin on every part of his body that had been clung on by that certain someone that is sharing bed with him, but nothing could compare to the sensation that his right hand was feeling as it was currently lodged amidst the valley of the softest mountains. An electric jolt ran through his body at the sensation he was currently having, and the life-giving bank was in an overexcited state, and his entire face had turned crimson red, just like the strand of hair that had landed on her face. He didn't need to be told who the person sleeping next to him is, for he already knew from her scent, and now with the strand of red hair that had fallen on his face his doubt had solidified and become the truth.
grasped. Slowly and steadily he started to lose himself from her grip, especially his right hand he didn't know what the situation was, but he did not want to aggravate it by having Rias wake up and misunderstand the situation, though he didn't think Rias was a girl to misunderstand things and turn it into a bad situation. A moan left her mouth as his hands roughly brushed off the softest tips of her mountain and the perked up protrusion. From then it took a millisecond for him to separate himself from her grasp, and if one were to actually look at the scene, then they would come to believe that he had literally teleported from her grasp on the bed, it was, as the center of one of the walls, to one end of the room. But from his new position his eyes that previously had the ceiling in view now were completely focused on the sleeping form of Rhea's, and try he might, he couldn't leave his eyes from her cutely sleeping naked form. Just the day before yesterday he had seen Rias in almost all her glory, when she had come in front of him wearing only a sea completely see-through nightwear and yellow-pink panties, but now he was seeing her in her full glory without a single piece of cloth, obscuring his view, even the blanket that had partially obscured them, had ridden of her frame when he jolted out of her grip. She seemed to have sensed that she no longer had him under his grasp like some kind of teddy bear, and slowly her sleep seemed to break. The pair of blue-green eyes slowly opened, and on opening her eyes seemed to look out for him, and a moment later after her eyes landed on him, she smiled the most beautiful and alluring smile he had ever seen grace, someone's face making his heart race at a thousand beats per second. Then she went on to raise her body to a sitting position, and then went on to stretch away the stiffness and remaining sleep, and in doing so gave him a view that he would never forget for his entire life. Her crimson red hair. Her milky white skin. Her beautiful face. Her blue-green eyes. Her alluring lips. She is quite enormous. Her pink areola. Her pink perked up. Her curvaceous frame. Her toned stomach. Her shapely waist. Her small hips. Her nicely shaped butt. Her long white legs. Her supple thighs. He even for more than a mere moment got a glimpse of that forbidden zone and could clearly see the small patch of red hair around it. Seriously, didn't the girl have any sense of nudity? But he certainly didn't care, for he was seeing a beauty completely out of the other world, and no, it wasn't sarcasm of her being from the underworld. He had seen a few girls' women in a similar situation, and they were all beautiful in their own right, but Rias just stood above them. She seemed to want to say something, but he beat her to it. You are a natural redeed, he commented. At his comment he received a blank look from Rias, and a second later it got quite flustered, as she spoke, is that the first thing you say to someone you found sleeping with you in your bed? Well, I have many words that want to roll out of my tongue, and at the same time my body wishes to do much more to you, but we will choose the most sensible option he spoke trying to control his raging hormones. And that would be a bewildered Rias spoke. You take the bathroom in this room, will I use the one next door, he replied. Was the only word that left the lips of a dumbfounded Rias. He didn't give it much of a thought, as he added, I don't know about you, but I need to use the bathroom ASAP. And with that he was out of the room in a flash leaving behind a dumbfounded and irritated Rhea's Gremory. She hadn't intended to, but Rhea's Gremory went on to use the bathroom, or rather she needed to use the bathroom, she had seen more than she had bargained for. Last night a distress signal had reached her through the Gremory clan symbol she had placed on Naruto, and she quickly mobilized to get to his aide Akeno, Kaneko, and Kiba joined her, as they all were present in the club room. Teleporting where Naruto was she was surprised to find a fallen angel being the one to attack him, she was aware that a few fallen angels had infiltrated her territory, but she had not expected them to attack Naruto or any of her peerage for that matter, she had believed their target to be Haim Misei, the wielder of Longinus. And so was surprised to see a fallen angel actually attacking Naruto, and it further surprised her to find the fallen angel was naked to boot. She had a lot of question at that time, but she wasn't going to get any answers, seeing that the fallen angel had fled the moment her eyes landed on them, and Naruto had gone unconscious with the injuries on his right arm and his right shoulder that were clearly caused by the light-based weapon of fallen angels. Still the mystery remained as to why the fallen angel was bare naked. With the way she tried to cover herself she certainly was clothed before, so what caused her clothes to vanish? She decided that she could get answers after Naruto was healed and awake, and so brought him to his home, which was quite pleasant in her view, and began the tedious job of healing him. She wasn't as adept at healing magic as she wanted to be, but, as Naruto is a part of her peerage, she was able to share her demonic powers with him and heal him, and that is what she did. This also gave her an opportunity to enact her plan on seducing him, for to share her demonic powers to heal him, she had embraced him all night, and what better way than to do so, while they were both stripped naked, she loved to sleep with no clothes on. Somehow amidst the night while sharing her demonic power, she had been lulled into sleep by his warmth and rhythmic heartbeat. Naruto made quite a good teddy bear. It was the sudden movement of her teddy bear that got her to leave the land of dreams and return to the world of reality.
The first thing her eyes sought after waking up was Naruto, and finding him she was glad to see both his wounds had healed completely, and then her eyes took a full look at Naruto. Last night after stripping him bare she had come to know that he was quite a healthy and fit teenager, but the priority of healing him made her focus on healing him rather than checking him out, she may be a sophisticated young lady and rarely got herself doing girly things like gossiping, talking about makeup fashion, talking about boys and such, but she is a teenager too. And seeing that she had decided to seduce and could possibly have to leave her future life with if her plan succeeded and so she really wanted to see how he looked beneath the clothes and what she was certainly pleased her. Naruto has a lean, muscular body with not a single amount of superfluous fat, which clearly showed the healthy lifestyle and the vigorous training he did, there was no way to achieve such a body other than leading a healthy lifestyle and going through vigorous training or by taking drugs, but she didn't see someone as upbeat and exuberant as Naruto to take the latter path. She also noticed that his body was also quite healthy as a male and she was quite pleased to see his reaction to her naked self. Her face was adorned with a blush seeing the part of his autonomy that would pierce inside of her if she were to continue with her plan and succeed in it, and that was quite pleasing and enthralling to her eyes and her body. But she had an agenda here other than healing Naruto, and for that she needed to get him to her pace and tease him a bit, and so she was quick to compose herself, which she was finding really hard, but before she could set her own pace of things, Naruto spoke up and completely put her off game. They didn't exchange more than a couple of sentences, but in those two sentences, not only did he leave her dumbfounded, but also thoroughly and completely flushed at his blatant admission of his state of mind. His comment about her being a natural Riti caused her to further heat up, and she was thankful that Naruto left to use the bathroom, because she too needed to use it. After a calming, refreshing, and relieving bath, she found herself in the dining room downstairs and was served a traditional Japanese breakfast consisting of bowl of miso soup, cup for green tea, glass of water, plate with rolled egg, broiled fish, pickled vegetables, green beans, and sesame salad, bowl of steamed rice, and a container with naan. It wasn't served right away though, as not only took some time to prepare breakfast, but Naruto also spent quite a time in the bathroom. She decided to not think about it much. This is good, she suddenly said after taking a bite of everything. It wasn't as good as Akeno's cooking, but it had a distinctive flavor, and it made it stand out. Thanks. Leaving by oneself for years does come with benefits, commented Naruto, as he looked from his eyes up from his food to her, and she was pleased to see him blush. She also didn't miss to notice that he seemed okay with the fact that he is an orphan, instead of asking for pity from people around. Then you wouldn't mind if I come around from time to time to have a taste of your cooking, would you? She questioned whether this would come good to her plan. Sure, but don't expect anything complicated from me, I am not good with most, he commented. Instead of words she replied with a smile which seemed to have quite an effect on Naruto, making him blush more. The silence greeted the two as they immersed themselves in the breakfast, a silence that Riaz didn't find as uncomfortable as she thought it would. So, what's the deal with the light element being harmful and poisonous to devils? questioned Naruto he had heard it from the fallen angel middle and experienced it by his own body and so she really wanted to know what the real deal was. Currently Riaz and Naruto were walking their way to come academy after they had finished with the breakfast and Riaz had summoned her school uniform and both had got dressed in their respective uniform. We are devils, the antithesis of the deities of heaven, especially the god from the bible. We devils are being recorded in the bible and such are the true antithesis of god from the bible. The God from the Bible is the creator father and leader of the angels and creator of the holy swords and sacred gear system. The biblical God has a system in place and it is because of this system that we devils cannot go near get involved with anything that has to do with the biblical God and doing so causes us to suffer nasty side effects like headaches, immense pain, etc. We are also vulnerable to holy objects such as crucifixes, holy water and the Bible and can get killed easily by holy swords and sacred gears with divine properties. We are also susceptible to light which significantly drains us of our energy once hit. Also, intense light, such as the light-based weapons used by angels and fallen angels and the light swords used by exorcists, can severely wound, if not kill, a devil, answered Riaz. I see replied Naruto, and then curiosity gleaming in his eyes he questioned so, how many or who of the angels and fallen angels are capable of using light element and light-based weapons? All was Riaz's one-worded simple reply. For a few seconds Naruto just stood his ground trying to process the single word that left the lips of Riaz, and after a few seconds of processing it, he found it hard to believe, and hence he questioned again, no, seriously. How many or who of the angels and the fallen angels are capable of using light element and light-based weapons? All. All angels and fallen angels are capable of using light element and light-based weapons. 
Even exorcists of the church use weapons that use the light element, replied Rias. Are you fucking kidding me? Roared Naruto what kind of nonsense is that? That's like that's cheating. Aren't you supposed to be fair and just? Giving your angels the able to use the element of light and making it harmful and poisonous to devil, where's the fairness in that god? Touch. A small smile graced the lips of Rias as she tried to regain the small headache she was currently suffering while seeing Naruto crouched on the ground holding his head, which clearly seemed to be in sheer pain. What was that? Questioned Naruto as he glared at her she certainly seemed to have forgotten to add something. According to the system, we can't even invoke the biblical god's name, and if evoked it causes the very feeling that you are feeling that you are feeling now, answered Rias. What? Screamed Naruto. By his side Rhea simply smiled, you could call this her form of revenge for having her cosplay, though she actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Stray devils. There are beings that are called, as such, the devil who was turned into a servant devil of a devil with the evil peace system, but who betrayed or killed their master, be it for their own greed, or because they were fed up with being servants of the egotistical masters who treated them nothing more than their servants or playthings. It was a rare occurrence, but when such things did happen the devil is to be dispatched quickly as possible for reincarnated stray devils without a master to filter demonic energy into them until they are truly used to it and thus they turn destructive, vicious, and work towards their own self-interests. They lose themselves to their own power. There was only one way to stop most of them and that was to put them down. That is the law of the devils. Even other factions, like those of angels and fallen angels see them as threats and eliminate the stray devils whenever found. And currently Rhea's Gremory and her peerage were on the very job eliminating a stray devil called Visor that had escaped into the Gremory territory. The place Visor seemed to have occupied is an unused building located at the outer part of the town, and it was there where Rhea's Gremory and her peerage were. Currently Rhea's Gremory was in a pinch. And no, it had nothing to do with the task of eliminating Visor. Rather the task was far easier than she loved to. It wasn't even necessary for her to be here, as Akeno, Kibo or Kaneko alone would have been enough for the job. Yet she was here, and it was all because she wanted the newest member of her peerage to see how devils fought, and this was where her problem lay. Pay attention. She called out to the blonde in an annoyed tone. But this is boring, he commented, as he continued to fiddle with something on his cell phone. And you don't even need me to be here, any of those three can easily take out the stray devil, he added, as he pointed out at Akeno, Kiba, and Kaneko. That may be true, but it isn't just about taking out a stray devil, but showing you how a battle between devils goes. To be precise, to show you what the various evil pieces and traits work and their place in the peerage, she replied. Yeah, I know. You have already said so numerous times, he replied. Which? Then pay attention. She growled in annoyance. But it's boring, he replied back. Twitch. Twitch. Then maybe something flashy might interest you, commented Akeno out of the blue. Just like always, her comments seemed to have gained Naruto's attention as he spoke with sparkling eyes, are you going to do a striptus? Thwack. The right palm met her face at the utter absurdity of the question. Ara, a striptus no, I would show you something more exhilarating than a striptus, replied Akeno, as she walked towards the monster that was on the ground after being hit by Kaneko-chan. Oh. Please do. Please do. Replied a star-eyed Naruto. Twitch. Twitch. Still she kept her cool and went on with her explanation, Akeno is the queen. She's the one who is the strongest after me. She is the unbeatable vice president of our club who has all the traits of pawn, knight, bishop, and rook. And again he seemed to be completely uncaring of her explanation, but this time around he had his attention focused on Akeno rather than on random things. This one's for you Naruto come, spoke Akeno as she gently licked her lips as she looked at the blonde as she put her hands towards the sky. Flash. Next instant, the sky sparkles and a lightning bolt strikes down the monster. Screamed Visor, as was electrified violently, as her entire body got burnt, and smoke was coming out from her. Ara Ara, looks like you still have some energy in you. Looks like you can take more, commented Akeno, and then once again turned to look at Naruto, as she added look closely, Naruto come. Flash. Another lightning bolt hit the monster. Another scream released the wide open mouth of Visor, as she once again got electrified. It was followed by a third lightning bolt in succession. She has entered her S mode, muttering with a small shake of her head, seeing the smile of sadist satisfaction on Akeno's face, despite the fact that she continued to strike down lightning bolts on Visor. Bukuku who knew Akeno was this interesting. The voice of Naruto reached her ears, and turning around she was a bit surprised to find the excited look on his face. Not another. She dearly wished that she didn't have a blonde male Akeno on her with a known perverse streak. But before she could understand or follow, Naruto suddenly reacted as a handful of some sort of projectiles left his hand at one corner of the building. 
Thank you. Thank you. Squelch. Squelch. Thank you. From the shadows emerged a man with blonde hair that reached past his shoulders and was dressed akin to a host club entertainer and had a couple of shuriken objects edged into his left arm. Before she could take count of the situation she was surprised to hear the Kaneko growl a single word, Imkai. Looking at her young rook let her Nekamata self take over with a pair of white cat ears and a matching white tail appearing on her head and back and her eye pupils became more cat-like. Save me, Siyasama, pleaded Visor, as her eyes caught the blonde who had taken her under her wing after she became a stray and gave her what her devil master could never. It was so much fun and satisfying with all of them ganging on her in contrast to her mini devil master. The Kiki you truly have outdone yourself this time, Visor. Who would have thought that you would bring such a good haul to save her spoke Sia as he licked his lips as his eyes took in the form of the redeed and black-haired buxom figured beauties and then onto the petite white girl as he added and above all to enjoy. You really have outdone all. Sia's words cut short in his throat and a pain gasp escaped his lips as he found everyone watching a kunai embedded in his left shoulder courtesy of Naruto that was in front of the blonde Imkai. Past was the only thought that crossed the mind of everyone no one had seen him move, despite him being in view of all present. He's faster than Kiba. Thought a surprise Ria's, but it wasn't the only thing that caught her attention. Isn't that a kunai and those he threw before were shuriken. You talk too much, spoke Naruto in a low and deadly tone as he pressed the kunai deeper into the shoulder of Sia. Screamed Sia as the kunai dug deep into his wounds he tried to push the blonde away, but he simply could not I have to use that. Everyone watched with disgusted eyes, at least the members of Rhea's peerage, as the blonde man started to transform into what could be an anthropomorphic rat about 8 feet tall. D.O.W. The fists of the anthropomorphic rat connected to the chest of Naruto and sent him skidding across the ground a few meters. You have hurt me three times already, boy, I will kill you first boy, and then. Slash. Screamed Sia as the kunai made a diagonal cut across his torso. I already said this before, you talk too much, especially for a rat, commented Naruto, and then turned to Rias and spoke Sarias, didn't you say that I have the ability to be a queen, rook, bishop, and a knight in enemy territory? Yes, since you are a pawn, and that is the ability of a pawn, replied Rias, as she watched with shock at the ease that Naruto seemed to be dodging the swipes from the anthropomorphic rat, the rat Imkai was strong that much she could sense, and so it was quite a shock to see the ease with Naruto seemed to be at while fighting an Imkai like him. Promotion. Rook were the two words that left the lips of Naruto, as he ducked under another swipe of the rad Imkai it was just a promotion to Rook, but he could feel the change in him, the pure and undulated strength course through him. Wham. Bleh. Blood blotted out of the anthropomorphic rat's mouth, as Naruto's right fist connected with his chest. Wham. Thud. The punch was followed by a powerful kick to the torso that sent the anthropomorphic rat crashing into the wall on the opposite side. So, this is the power of the evil pieces I see. This is interesting muttered Naruto as he clenched his fist, sensing the change in his overall being when he was promoted to Rook. A feral smile etched his lips as his eyes turned to look at the anthropomorphic rat barely getting out of the rubble. Don't go out so early, I want to try this out to see what reincarnating as a devil helped me with. Let's get on with the ass kicking. D.O.W. Slam. Thud. Thank you. Slam. Amazing. Muttered Kiba the trait of the rook is superhuman strength leading to high offense and defense, but they are not very quick, and yet, while using the promotion of rook Naruto, not only seemed to have gained superhuman strength, but seemed to still retain the speed he previously showed actually it seemed like he had gained more speed. Even Rias was surprised by the fact, but she was more surprised to find that Naruto is much stronger than she had anticipated. Yufufufu giggled at Akeno, as something other than Naruto's skills caught her attention to Bayo. Huh. Yufufufu who knew Naruto-kun had such a cute side. As for Kaneko, she noticed something that no others noticed, and it crossed a sense of worry through her. That was exhilarating. Commented Naruto, as he occupied one of the sofas in the orc clubroom. Yes, it was. Replied Rias, as she occupied the seat directly in front of the sofa Naruto had occupied, though it seemed more of a one-way brawl than an actual fight. The group excluding Kiba had returned back to occult research club clubroom after the matter with the stray devil visor had been dealt with. A problem did arise during the mission in the form of the Imkai Kikso, but it turned out to be a silly distraction, as Naruto literally tore him down. Aha I guess I was too excited, it had been more than a couple of months since I actually got to stretch my muscles, and I really wanted to see what the evil pieces actually do, since I barely feel any change, as a pawn, and I must say it was quite a good change, replied Naruto. You really are strong, commented Rias. I did tell you, didn't I? I am strong. 
I have had my fair share of fights and conflicts over the years, and something of the caliber and strength of that Imkai was certainly no problem, replied Naruto with a wide grin stretching his face. Indeed it was quite a sight to watch you fight, Naruto-kun commented to Akeno as she walked out of the kitchen adjoining the club room, carrying a tray filled with teacups. What is with the choice of using promotion to Rook? A promotion to Queen would rather have given you a boost in overall abilities. It was quite a valid question. Well, in terms of the evil pieces the queen is the strongest piece, only next to the king, and the pawn is the lowest of the evil pieces, and if you put it in ninja terms, then it would be like comparing a genin to a genin that has just started out as a ninja, and you never give a fresh genin tools, powers, and skills of a genin, and hope for him to use it with ease. On the contrary, the rook, knight, and bishop are in between, and seemed like a good place to start. It will also be helpful whenever I do a promotion to queen, as the queen piece possesses all the characteristics of rook, knight, and bishop pieces answered Naruto. That actually made a lot of sense to Riaz and Akeno, while Kaneko was barely paying attention, as she had another thing occupying her mind. Riaz not only agreed, but was surprised by the intellect of Naruto, but a few of his words caught her attention more, as her eyes started to sparkle, as she slowly put forth her words, you are a ninja. I am replied Naruto, as he tried to move a bit, but couldn't, as he was trapped by the sofa in the back, and Ria's in front she was too close, and it felt a bit uncomfortable, though in a pleasant way seriously, why do I react to Ria's in this way in such situations? I don't react to other girls in this manner. It especially didn't help when her eyes went all sparkly, and she closed in the remaining distance, and their faces were almost touching I can feel her breath on my face he thought, as his face heated up. You can use chakra, with those four words Kaneko broke her silence and stared impassively at Naruto waiting for his response. She had sensed it during the fight between the Imkai Kikso and Naruto, and even though it felt a bit different it was without a doubt chakra. Kaneko's sudden statement gave Naruto a breather as Ria's got some distance between the two, and it also surprised him that Kaneko was actually able to sense him using chakra. Chakra unlike demonic holy powers, spiritual physical powers, and mana, as one could sense those energies with a little bit of training, unless the user was capable of hiding his energy quite well, but the same couldn't be done with chakra, and the only was one to be born, as a sensor. And able to use chakra him or herself, or could be learned to sense through use of the fabled Senjutsu practitioners. So how come Kaneko not only knows of chakra, but senses it too? Ikan Naruto's reply died in his mouth, as his eyes for the first time since fighting the Imkai got a full view of Kaneko, it was not a well-known fact, but the old man had told him of a few species of Imkai capable of using chakra, albeit in a slightly different way than he used. Howey. The words left his lips, as he couldn't help, as he jumped of his seat and literally gobbled up a shocked Kaneko in a bear hug, as he went on to rub his cheeks against hers, he had intended to see how cute Kaneko would look in a pair of Nekamimi and a matching tail, but who knew that she came in a white pair of her own, and she looked super cute in them. Thud. Biro senpai Screamed an embarrassed Kaneko, as she punched away the blonde of her face, and her face had gone completely red. Rr, that was new, commented Akeno, as she stifled back her giggles. Meanwhile Ria's just looked dumbfounded at the scene, she didn't understand what she should react to, the fact that Kaneko actually showed emotions, or that Naruto jumped on Kaneko hogging her in her bear hug. It was at this moment that Kiba accidentally arrived, and seeing the scene in front of him he couldn't help but ask, did I miss something? Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.